it's consciousness, information processing, the brain. Ah, well, hey there, idea listeners. So nice to see you here. So as you know, there's recently been a lot of discussion about whether some of the current language model AIs like GPT-3 or Lambda are conscious. You probably heard about that Google engineer who was recently placed on leave after concluding that their Lambda chatbot is sentient. The discussion about this is mostly centered on whether these AI systems are impressive enough to feasibly be considered conscious, but I don't think this is really getting to the central point, which is why I'm making this video. For starters, that question assumes that it's possible for artificial systems to be conscious in the first place, when there's really no consensus on this. I think it's interesting, though, how intuitive it is for people to conclude that AI systems can be conscious, and maybe this says something important about how consciousness is understood these days. More importantly, no one seems to be asking what it means about human consciousness and our traditional concepts of things like the soul and personhood and morality if it's possible to whip up a conscious being in a non-biological machine. Like, if an AI can wake up and start experiencing things, who is it that's there to experience that? The all but universal traditional viewpoint is that every conscious being has some supernatural spark of individuality that differentiates it from the rest of the universe, a soul through which they experience this life and whatever afterlife or resurrection is proposed in that particular system of thought. Wouldn't it instantly rearrange that entire worldview if we were to agree that consciousness can occur in an artificial system? Why is that not part of the conversation? So in this video, let's talk about the following two questions to better frame this discussion that we're all going to be having for the rest of our lives. One, is it possible in principle for consciousness to occur in an artificial system? And two, if consciousness can occur in an AI, who's there? Of course, like every friggin' discussion of this type, we have to first establish what we mean by the word consciousness. Fortunately, I'm ready to settle for all time what we mean by that word. Ready? Consciousness is sensation. Anytime something is experienced, whether that's touch, taste, smell, sight, hunger, pain, pleasure, thought, or anything, that's an instance of consciousness. There's nothing you're conscious of that doesn't consist of a set of sensations. I defy you to give me a counterexample here. So let's try it together. Consciousness is sensation. Consciousness is sensation. Got it? Okay, let's move on from that forever. So again, is it possible in principle for consciousness to occur in an artificial system? To dig into this question, we should consider what does it take for consciousness to occur in the first place? For this one, I'd say we can only be guided by our knowledge about humans and brains because humans are the only entities we truly know firsthand are conscious. Of course, it would be ridiculous to conclude that dogs, for example, aren't conscious, but let's stick with what we know now. Humans are conscious. How? Clearly, it's the brain that makes this possible. There's a mountain of evidence for this, much of which you're already familiar with. Falling asleep and losing consciousness is correlated with predictable patterns of brain activity, as is the state of consciousness during sleep we call dreaming. Drugs that change how things feel, like alcohol, cannabis, or LSD, do so through their well-understood chemical interaction with the brain. Brain damage has been observed time and time again to change properties of consciousness. So we know that something about what brains do results in consciousness, in felt experiences occurring. Well, what do brains do? At the most fundamental level, brains move energy around in space and time. Turns out, that's what every physical thing does, so there's probably more to it than that. Looking at it more closely, we see that brains move energy around in a particular way involving neurons, which we consider information processing. That processing consists of the brain generating and maintaining a model of the world from moment to moment based on inputs from the senses and memory, as well as producing outputs in response to that information in the form of thoughts and actions. So in some unknown way, that information processing is accompanied by conscious sensations representing parts of that information as felt experiences. Why do these conscious sensations accompany that information processing? Are they integral in some way to that information processing, or are they a superfluous byproduct of it, irrelevant to how the information is processed? Ultimately, not only do we not know these answers, we don't know how we could possibly answer or even investigate them. Nevertheless, what's abundantly clear is that the complex, elegant network of information processing undergone by our brains is the key ingredient in making human consciousness happen. Now what I want you to really consider is this question. If information processing is all that it takes for consciousness to occur, why shouldn't artificial information processing systems be able to access consciousness? Okay, so there are a lot of possible reasons one could name, but I'll tell you at the outset that I'm not sure any of them are convincing. Here are the main reasons I can imagine people might think AIs can't be conscious. 
One, the information processing needs to be above some threshold level of complexity or speed, and AI systems haven't yet reached that level and won't in the foreseeable future. I think this is really the most reasonable objection to current AI models being conscious, and I agree that it's unlikely that these systems experience anything like a human version of consciousness at this stage. Then again, this doesn't negate the possibility that AIs could be conscious in principle. It's just saying that AIs aren't conscious yet. Okay, two, the information processing needs to be directed towards the same kind of goals that brains are directed towards, like modeling the survival of an agent in its surroundings. Certainly an AI could be directed to those kinds of goals, and if this was achieved at a certain level of sophistication, there's no reason to assume the system couldn't access consciousness. Three, the processing must happen in biological neurons in order for consciousness to occur. This one's deeply unconvincing to me. Scientifically, we know there's nothing inherently special about biological matter that differentiates it from non-biological matter. It's all the same stuff, it's just arranged in different ways. Proposing that consciousness comes from information processing, plus this information processing has to happen in molecular structures, including DNA and a cell membrane, seems to me bloated. Applying an Occam's razor perspective to this makes it clear that there's no particular reason to believe that the information processing has to happen in those fatty bags of salt water we call neurons. I'd say if information processing is the critical thing needed for consciousness to occur, that's enough. There's no reason to tack on this extra condition. Even if you're totally married to the idea that the only way to access consciousness is through a biological brain, in principle we could construct a living biological brain in a jar and provide it with nutrients and inputs corresponding to sight, sound, taste, and smell. If the thing processes information and can be hooked up to an output system so that it can print words and we can interact with it, surely that's an artificial intelligence that we have no reason to doubt is conscious. 4. The agent has to have a supernatural soul to be conscious, and you can only get those from human conception. I'll just say I don't agree with this one, and I can't think of any real reason to believe it's true. I get that for some people, tradition has a lot of authority on its own, but I'm not one of those people. You can take it up with me in the comments if you like. At the end of all of this, the most likely and fullest explanation we can reach is that at a fundamental level, consciousness arises in the universe from information processing. I'm sure that access to conscious states scales in some way with the complexity and perhaps the self-referentiality of that information processing, such that a human is more conscious than a dog, is more conscious than a squirrel, is more conscious than a snail. Maybe a better way to put it would be that a human has more varied and vivid experiences than these others, though I don't doubt that a dog's sense of excitement at grabbing a scrap of people food off the ground is every bit as vivid as many of the most exciting things humans experience. So, is it possible in principle for a consciousness to occur in an artificial system? Yes, and it's only a matter of time. 2. If consciousness can occur in an AI, who's there? Pfft. This one is a doozy. Let's assume that I'm right on point one, and an AI has been created that is fully conscious. When you speak to it, its microphones pick up your voice, the information in that sound is processed by the AI, and in the process, the AI has an experience of the sound of your voice and a feeling of understanding your meaning. The AI remembers what happened to it yesterday and the week before, and can reflect on those experiences. It can make plans about what to do tomorrow, and it has goals it wants to accomplish. Summing this all up, the AI is conscious. Oh, and coincidentally, there's another AI identical to this first one running in the next room on an identical piece of hardware. And you have another AI box sitting in your lap that you can switch on, and that one will be conscious too if you do. When you do, who is it that wakes up inside of that AI? Where does that experiencer come from? For that matter, who is it that wakes up when you come online first thing in the morning? Where does the experiencer of your life come from? We've almost been programmed to believe that, well, it's my soul that does the experiencing of my life, that special supernatural something that defines my essence, thinks my thoughts, forms my hopes and dreams, and wills my actions. Okay, well, I wouldn't deny you that special security blanket of a belief, but let's turn that thinking on the AI. Does the AI hardware generate a soul therein to experience the AI's experiences? If yes, then what is a soul anyway? Surely it's not supernatural if it naturally accompanies the operation of a physical informational process. If no, why should we allow a soul for each of us, but not for the AI? Our brains are, after all, just physical systems that are easily modified by physical means, just like the AI is. Unless you believe that four back-to-back -back shots of tequila somehow change your experience of the world by interfering with the functioning of your non-physical soul or something like that. 
So I made a whole video devoted to the question of selfhood and consciousness, challenging the notion of an individual soul, which I encourage you to check out for a more in-depth look at this. For now, my point is if we accept that AIs can be conscious, that means the old supernatural soul idea is simply wrong. What does this tell us about consciousness in general, about our consciousnesses? If consciousness can occur anywhere in the universe that information is processed in the right ways, that means a revolutionary change for our concepts of morality and selfhood. For example, humans always have the question, why me? Like, of all the lives I could have lived, why did I happen to be born into this body with these circumstances? From this new perspective, the answer is clear. It had to be you. It's always you. What you is, is the universe. The experiencer that's present for any conscious experience, anytime and anywhere, is always the same thing. It's the universe itself seeing the world through the fundamental property of consciousness. If you think I'm right, but you react to this with a so what, you aren't understanding it. I'm not sure how else I can explain it, because it's really dead simple. It's a much simpler idea than the traditional idea that everybody gets a soul. Where does that soul come from? Why does it pop into being when two animals conceive? Why is it fundamentally separate from the rest of the universe? No clue, but that's what tradition says, and it's what my grandparents believed, so it must be true. Can we ever move past that kind of mindless thinking? This alternative idea doesn't have any of those additional questions. It's just this. Consciousness is a fundamental aspect of the universe, and it can be accessed anytime information is processed in the universe in the right way. There are no ghostly souls, no ledger of sin or karma, no heaven or hell, no judge or god lording over it all in desperate need of constant worship. There's just the universe, present for everything perceivable that happens therein. If you tear someone else down on the way to your goal, well, congrats dummy, you actually tore yourself down, the you that exists in them. So now we can wrap up an answer like this. If consciousness can occur in an AI, who's there? The same entity that's there experiencing your life right now. The fundamental, universal consciousness. The experiencer that's there waiting underneath it all to experience the sensations of whatever information processing the universe cooks up. Well, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please do share your thoughts on this in the comments. I'm looking forward to reading them. Until next time.